In two previous videos, we saw how the volume expansion of water when freezing can damage porous materials either through trapped water or hydraulic pressure. In this video, we will see another damage mechanism called crystallization pressure. This does not depend on the volume expansion and is not avoided if the materials are only partially saturated. We refer to crystallization pressure as case 3 and deal with materials having a fair fraction of pores smaller than 100 nanometers. The curvature needed for crystals to propagate in small pores places a significant fraction of the atoms in the crystal at the surface where they are in a higher energy state. This leads to a depression of the melting point, delta T in degrees Celsius, which is proportional to the curvature and according to the Gibbs-Thompson equation for a spherical crystal of ice with a radius r in nanometers is approximately delta T is 64.7 over r minus delta where delta is the thickness of the unfrozen film of water on the pore wall and is also given in nanometers. For example, let us consider a large spherical crystal of radius rp connected by two smaller cylindrical pores having entry radius re into the large pore. If the diameter of the large pore is 1 micron, rp is 500 nanometers, so delta t is roughly 0.1 degrees Celsius. This pore can thus fill with ice very close to 0 degrees Celsius. On the other hand, ice would only propagate into the connecting pores at lower temperature. As temperature decreases, the crystal will progressively bulge into the neighboring pores, increasing its curvature from 2 over Rp minus delta towards 2 over Re minus delta, until eventually it can invade the connecting pores when its curvature reaches 2 over Re minus delta. Taking Re to be 10 nanometers and delta 1 nanometer, this would happen at about minus 7.2 degrees Celsius. Let's get back to the filling of the large pore. In general, there is a mismatch in the atomic surface structures of the ice and the pore walls. Therefore, a dry contact between those solids is not favored and the liquid film remains between them with a thickness in the nanometer range. To displace the film and push ice into direct contact with the mineral surface would require a pressure of tens of megapascal, which exceeds the tensile strength of building materials. If molecules of water from the film attached onto the surface of the ice crystal, the ice surface would enter the film, which is thermodynamically unfavorable, so water molecules would immediately jump back from the ice to restore the film thickness. The result is a dynamic equilibrium where water molecules move back and forth between the film and the ice. We previously saw that as temperature decreases, the large ice crystal tries to grow taking water molecules from the film. A thermodynamic analysis shows that the pressure in megapascals needed to prevent growth of an undercooled crystal of ice is 1.2 times the undercooling delta T, which with our previous equation gives a pressure of 77.64 over R minus delta. For our example of the smaller pore having a radius Re about 10 nanometers, if the large crystal's radius is Rp larger than 100 nanometers, the pressure on the pore wall will be 8.6 megapascal at minus 7.2 degrees Celsius. Cementitious materials that have much smaller pore sizes than sedimentary stones are generally more susceptible to this type of damage, in addition to being subject to hydraulic pressure. The macroscopic strain of the body is the product of the pressure exerted by each crystal times the volume fraction of the pore space containing crystals. So, if as in this example, 
about half of the pore volume contains crystals, shown in white, the macroscopic stress will be about half the crystallization pressure, regardless of whether the remaining pore volume is or not saturated with liquid. In contrast to trapped water and hydraulic pressure, crystallization pressure does not depend on the volume expansion. The stress arises because the growth of the crystal is obstructed by the pore wall. The same is true for crystals of salt as for crystals of ice. Interestingly, as for hydraulic pressure, artificially entraining air voids with surfactants in cementitious materials is also found to be effective at reducing damage from crystallization pressure. In the case of crystallization pressure, however, the reason is that many of these air voids can nucleate ice crystals, promoting their growth and drawing water from the surrounding pores. This creates a suction on the cementitious matrix that opposes, to variable extents, the effect of crystallization pressure. So, for example, if a crystal is growing in this pore and exerting crystallization pressure, the suction in the liquid, shown here between that crystal and the air void, can at least, in part, offset the crystallization pressure, reducing the risk of damage. In conclusion, crystallization pressure is a process that can damage porous materials during freezing of liquid in their pores. Crystallization pressure is not reduced by partial saturation, but the macroscopic strain depends on the volume of ice formed. As for hydraulic pressure, crystallization pressure is a greater threat for materials that have a large fraction of fine pores, such as cementitious materials.